Good morning, good afternoon, folks. This is Nathan from the Bronx River Alliance. I am currently at Concrete Plant Park, sitting at the foodway. Behind me is some purple verbena popping up above my head. Um, I'm near the Westchester entrance of Concrete Plant Park, near the Six Trains Whitlock Avenue stop. Um, we can actually probably hear in a second the Six Train roaring behind us. Um, Today, I just wanted to kind of give folks a little bit of an update on what is ready to harvest here at the Foodway, what is growing, what fruit is available. Now that the strawberries have finished their time, um, people are scavenging for other really delicious fruit. So we're excited to show off raspberries, both white and red varieties today. I'm gonna to show you some blueberries, um, talk about some of the herbaceous plants, including mint, um, some of the anise hyssop that's available, um, and also just kind of point out uh, or rem remind folks how to be harvesting things. Um, and so if, if we're lucky, Journey might be joining us. Uh, she's on her way. Uh, but I'm gonna get started for folks and kind of just give you guys a little bit of a food way tour. Um, so today is, oh, it's not July yet. It's June 30th. Uh, so we're on our last day of, of June. Um, and so this is kind of really where we're starting to see our summer garden show up. So once again, I'm by the Westchester entrance of Concrete Plant Park where you can see this beautiful purple verbena uh, just doing really, really well. It's near the pear trees. Um, we have some milkweed that is growing. You can see it's kind of wilting. We're, we're actually in the process of watering here at the park. I'm super fortunate to have some neighbors um, who have come out to really support uh, and help take care of the space because it's really a large space, right? Uh, right here, we're seeing some bees just go mad over this St. John's wort. Um, they love it. This is a medicinal plant known for helping with anxiety and depression. And back there, that pink flower is yarrow. Often you'll find a yellow variety or a white variety, which you can also see here. Medicinal, really great for wounds, um, really good for stomach aches and I believe headaches as well but I love the St. John's wort and I just think it's so cool to see these bees have like a field day, right? So very much the food way this time of year, tons of pollinators. As I'm walking by, you can see our welcome to the food way sign. You can actually see right here, these berries that are coming through, they're actually seeds. I guess berries are seeds, right? Uh, but this is sumac. So what we're kind of nestled within right now is fragrant sumac. And these berries are actually uh, the fragrant sumac berries, very similar to staghorn sumac, which you can find around the city. There's actually some uh, behind us, kind of the tropical looking plants. Um, but this stuff uh, has like a lemony powder on it. So you can actually kind of like nibble on it or suck on the seeds. And um, it has this like lemony flavor, uh, often called like indigenous lemonade because our uh, indigenous folks used to soak it in water and make a drink from it. Um, very similar to a lemonade that you know, lemons are tropical, so we, we cannot grow those up north. So this is a really cool alternative. So you can check those out. Um, some of my favorite plants are starting to flower. We got our mountain mint, which is so delicious. As many of you know, mountain mint is the original inspiration for toothpaste. Um, it's got an incredibly strong mint flavor. And across from that, you'll see bergamot. Bergamot or Monarda fistulosa is a native. Uh, it's also famous for being Earl Grey tea. So you can make uh, tea from the leaves or from the flowers, both of which are edible. The whole plant's edible. It's related to the mint. So it's very um, hearty. And beside that, you'll see some sweet fern, which is a native shrub doing really nice here. It's got a nice lemony smell. This is part of our fragrant garden in the very Northern section. A lot of these plants have really fragrant smells and tastes. So that's very lemony. And this is one a lot of folks think is lavender, but we call this plant anise hyssop. Very common, it's got this licorice flavor. So for those that like licorice, you might enjoy this plant. Related to mint, it has um, properties that are really good for digestion, um, but a really great pollinator here. As you can see, there's a little bee buzzing around right there. It's a honeybee. And you can see these, these little splashes of orange. So this is butterfly weed, um, a very common plant, very resilient, um, non-edible. I've heard you can eat the pods by cooking them, but uh, non-edible, really here for our pollinators. 
really beautiful little like splashes of orange, which I like. And then I guess in the front and in the back, this is Northern Bayberry. So Northern Bayberries are very much the bay leaf that we've come to love and put in our foods. Uh, this is a non-Caribbean variety. So the, the variety we get for, from the grocery store is a Caribbean variety. This is our native, really drought tolerant, famous for producing these berries that when they dry out in the fall and they, or they form in the fall, they turn silver, can be melted down into a, a natural wax. So vegan wax. But the leaves you would dry out and it concentrates the flavor so you have a more intense flavor. Otherwise, you're gonna need to use quite a bit of, of leaves for your dish. Some more of the butterfly weed. This, this plant here that's ending flowering um, is New Jersey tea. So New Jersey tea, um, I think is really interesting. This is the plant that replaced uh, the, during the Boston Tea Party when the tea was thrown overboard. This is uh, actually a native that's you know, grows in the region that indigenous folks showed uh, the colonialists uh, that this could be an alternative to black tea. So you can take the leaves of this plant um, and soak it in water or, you know, make a tea from it. Um, and it is non, it is not caffeinated. <laughs> Someone once asked that and I was like, let me look this up. It's not caffeinated, but we have several of these plants, but this is kind of no near the Northern section. What else is going on? So. We can see our friends are doing some incredible work out here. We have some calamint. Good morning, Nancy. <laughs> this is some calamint, one of the many varieties of mint we have in the park. Um, it's more for the pollinators than for us humans, but it is edible. Um, really beautiful and it creates this nice like bushy, kind of looks like a lemon, like lemon thyme actually. Um, it's cute really cute so you can see it's flowering little white flowers and our friends are actually harvesting some of the nepeta nepeta is cat mint and you can see that by cutting it we can actually uh, basically deadhead it and regenerate a whole new plant which will have a nice um, flower head because you can see that these flowers have been spent they're done, they're done blooming, and um, right now, because we are in the middle of a, a bit of a drought, as I would say, um, things are dying back, and so this is a good time to be deadheading or cutting back and encouraging by watering a second um, regrowth. Right here, we've got a famous natural Band-Aid. This is lamb's ear, one of my favorites. I think it's a lot of people's favorites because it's so freaking soft. <laughs> but it's antimicrobial. Um, it's good at helping to clot blood, um, but lamb's ear you can find throughout the foodway and it's pretty aggressive. It'll, it'll really kind of take over an area. You can see in the background tons of black-eyed Susans, black-eyed Susans along with echinacea, the purple flower back there, um, are really famous for helping with, helping boost your immune system rather. Let's see if I can get close to some of the echinacea so we can check that out here we go there's our echinacea very common you'll see this throughout uh, the city a very drought drought tolerant resilient pollinator uh, the whole plant is medicinal the best time to be harvesting these flowers are right when they open just like that these are a little shy of opening and this is maybe a little too spent you might be seeing some smoke we're burning a little mugwort which helps keep the, the pests away we have a safe little a little fire where we're keeping um, an eye on, but it really helps us keep those pests away. So more yarrow you'll see growing. And in the background, you can actually see our chestnuts are in bloom. And this is one of the first years I've seen such a display. I want to get nice and close for you all. They've got these really beautiful feathery flowers and bees love them. And I just think they're so beautiful. They're like bottle brush flowers. So really exciting. We're gonna have chestnuts this year. Those will turn into chestnuts, believe it or not. So it's a Chinese variety, a high, Chinese hybrid with the American chestnut. We nearly lost due to American chestnut blight. In the, around the turn of the century. So really cool plants. We're excited to have them here at the park. And below them, they've been scorched a little bit, but we've got hazelnut 
baby hazelnut trees. So I mentioned we're kind of in the middle of a drought. This was all really brown last week. We finally got access to a significant source of water. We've been watering the heck out of the ground, making sure that everything is thriving. But witch hazel is really great as an astringent. These are still too young to harvest, but it's really great that we just have them as a part of our uh, diversity here at the Foodway or part of our food forest. Uh, witch hazel is famous as a astringent, really good for cleaning out your pores and your skin. So they're too small, like I said, now to harvest the bark, which is the essential ingredient. Because if we harvest the bark, we obviously would start killing the plants. So we gotta wait till they're a bit older. And this, what I'm focusing on right now, are some elderberries. We have a little grove of elderberries. I'm gonna zoom in on this one, where you can see all the stages of the elderberry growth, which is looking really exciting. So the flowers, which are edible, will not cause a stomach ache, are right here and they're just finishing their flowering stage which is going to move right into this berry stage and this is uh you know obviously the first cluster of berries you'll f you'll see um, when they turn into berries we need to process them before eating them because as many know <laughs> they can actually upset your stomach um, but this is a famous plant for helping with um, control viral loads, um, just making sure that your body stays healthy. Um, so right now, kind of thinking about COVID, this was a popular one that people were kind of going towards um, as they were trying to find natural solutions to like, keeping themselves healthy. There's a baby chestnut, really small, about three, four feet. Someone planted some radishes, which are looking adorable as they pepper just kind of fill right in here with the with the chives and thankfully um, because of all of our watering our New England asters which are these guys are starting to fill in and we actually might hack them which seems a little alarming but we might cut them in half for visibility to keep them shorter and when you do that uh, with certain types of plants including asters you actually increase their ability to have flower heads so essentially, instead of having one flower, um, you would actually increase the clusters by chopping off the top. It's like, um, there's a term with trees called pollocking, where you cut off the top of the tree and then branches go out the side. That's essentially what you're doing. And those new growths is wh uh, are where flowers form. So that's why we're doing it. We're gonna try to get tons of flowers, which are medicinal. Asters are really great for folks who have asthma or respiratory issues. Um, they're also 